Good morning and welcome to this YouTube channel Pain Free Partha. Please subscribe to this channel Pain Free Partha and also listen to this video till the last slide because I am going to summarize in a simple way the normal changes of pregnancy. So this is our institute, Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute Pondicherry. And almost all my slides are available in painfreepartha.com. So maternal physiology, what to know and why? What you need to know and why you need to know? The baby comes in true. Okay, the baby is in. And the baby has to get accommodated. And the baby has to get nutrients. The baby has to grow. So first of all, it is, should come, grow, get nutrients, accommodated for the growth and all these things. So there are a lot of changes takes place to do this. And these are all the changes that are significant for the obstetrician and also for the anesthetist. So what are the systems involved? CVS, RS, CNS, head and neck. Eyes, ENT, gastrointestinal, renal, hematological, endocrine, musculoskeletal, almost all are there. The weight increases by 12 kilos approximately. This is for a normal adult. Now, this is cardiovascular. You can see the normal heart. And we will go to the changes now. The total body water increases so much times. Starts by 5 to 6. Bed volume, sorry increases total body water increases pregnancy is a condition of chronic volume overload water retention exceeds sodium retention that is why there is a decrease to plasma osmolality now the fluid increases chronic volume overload water retention is more sodium retention is less so there is a decrease to plasma osmolality Normal may be around 285, this may come around 275 or 278. The cardiac output starts to increase from 8 weeks of pregnancy. Both heart rate will increase and stroke volume will increase. And in the labor, the cardiac output may be up to 10 liters. In labor, it may be up to 10 liters. First, it facilitates maternal and fetal exchanges of respiratory gases, nutrients, metabolites. And second, it reduces the impact of maternal blood loss at delivery. The cardiac output increases. So, it puts all the nutrients, it puts all the oxygen and gases to the baby. What are the hemodynamic changes? Now we have found CVS like cardiac output increases. Systolic BP may not change. The diastolic BP will decrease. The heart rate may be increased by 20%. The cardiac output already we have shown increased. CVP and PCWP, no change. The systemic vascular resistance may come down. The pulmonary vascular resistance may also come down. So, again, if you go to the next slide, cardiac output is increased. Why? Stroke volume is increased. Heart rate is increased. Because we need nutrients. The systemic vascular resistance decreases because we need vasodilatation to accommodate the so much of blood volume increase. We need to have a placenta to give blood to the fetus, to give nutrients to the fetus. And this should be a low resistance circulation because if the placenta is high resistance, no blood will go from the mother to the fetus. So we need a low resistance circulation of placenta. And we have vasodilatation to accommodate such things. In the SVR decreases. Cardiac output in the SVR is BP. So there may not be any change in the blood pressure. In fact, the due to vasodilatation, the diastolic BP may fall a bit. So blood volume increased, more blood, and you need vasodilatation for it to accommodate it. Because if the blood volume increases to 8 liters and there is no space, what will happen? Yes. So we need vasodilatation. We need a lower system circulation. We need fetal circulation. All these will accommodate these things. 
So CVP and P sub WP. First trimester non-pregnant state. You see, uterus receives two to three percent. By term, it is eighteen percent. Reduction of fraction of cardiac output going to the splanchnic and skeletal muscles. Splanchnic bed and skeletal muscles. Sir, there is a reduction in the fraction of cardiac output. It is not reduction of cardiac output. Remember, it's a fraction which decreases, and uterus receives seventy percent, seventeen percent. For the gravida with heart disease and low cardiac reserve, the increase in the work of the heart may cause failure and edema. So we may need an effective pain relief in such patients. Epidural may cause vasodilatation, and it may get patients. It's ideal to have such things. An epidural analgesia in patients with cardiac illness. Cardiac output is lower. This is what is the traditional teaching, because because the IVC compresses the uterus. So there is a decrease the venous return to the heart. So that is why it seems at 32 weeks, where the uterus is big, venous compression is there. People thought the cardiac output has decreased, but it doesn't. Postpartum hemodynamic changes return after two to four weeks after delivery. Now you see wedge. To keep a wedge, and the baby is tilted like this, the IVC is not compressed. So this gives IVC compression is less means there is more venous return, more cardiac output is one point. So blood pressure is maintained. Another point is what you call as as aortic compression. Here there is an aortic compression. This causes an silent coactation. So silent coactation means what? The upper limb BP is maybe high. If you check BP after spinal, the BP may be normal, but because it may be a coarctation. So the lower limb BP is maybe low. So the another significant problem in this is there is less placental circulation. So if you keep a wedge, you are also avoiding an aortic compression and the placental blood flow is good. So that is the another advantage that is positive effect. Another advantage of getting the wedge. What is the cardiovascular system findings on auscultation? There may be S3 gallop, there may be continuous murmurs, there may be ejection systolic murmurs, spitting of second sounds may be there. In X-ray, there may be a straightening of left border, heart position may appear as cardiomegaly. In ECG, there may be left axis deviation. There is a non-specific STT changes. Now, what we have found out ECG changes in pregnancy is WPW syndrome is common. Shortened PR interval is common. So this is what is our findings in patients with pregnancy. In echo, LVH may be there. 94% exhibit mild tricuspid pulmonary regurgitation and 27 exhibit mitral regurgitation. So that is physiological in echo and LVH and a mild pulmonary and tricuspid regurgitation is normal. 25%, one-fourth, they have some MR. Respiratory system. Hyperemia of the nasopharynx. Estrogen-mediated nasal stuffiness and epistaxis. That is why in pregnant patients, nasal tube is always dangerous. There may be bleeding. It is difficult to find out the tube as soon as it enters the pharynx. Polyposis of the nose. Sinuses may regress after delivery. There is some, what is you say is chronic cold like. So there is, I, I have seen a lot of patients getting this levocetrazine, telecost, l Montes or whatever it is, and the Montelukost combination for such conditions. But it is actually physiological. In airway edema and difficult intubation, weight gain in large breast may hamper mass ventilation. It is very difficult. Size of the EG tube matters because in a non-pregnant same patient, 7.5 may go in. But here 7 may go or 6.5 may go, especially in pH. The malambati classification will becoming worse. So normal pregnancy itself, you can see worse, worse malambati classifications. The thoracic cage becomes rounder. You can see here. 
changes of rib cage and expanding uterus. The total lung capacity comes down by 5% and FRC comes down by 20%, while the vital capacity has got no change, tidal volume increases. This decreased FRC causes decreased oxygen reserve. Functional residual capacity is the amount, for example, it is 2 liters. 2 liters of atmospheric air. 21% of atmospheric air is oxygen. So that means FRC is the oxygen reserve, which is around 350-400 ml. The FRC decreases from 2.5 to 1.6 liters. The oxygen comes down from 350 ml reserve to 270 ml reserve. So the oxygen reserve comes down with FRC. But the consumption increases because you need to also cater the fetus. It increases by 30-40%. So the oxygen reserve is less, the consumption is more. That is why in apnea, it, they desaturate at 150 millimeters of mercury per minute, where a normal non-pregnant adult female of the same age group may desaturate only at 30 millimeters of mercury per minute. What I am clearly telling, now you are keeping oxygen, 100%. The PO2 is around 450 now. Now, you make the patient apneic. In 3 minutes, 150 millimeters of mercury, 450 becomes 0. Okay? In pregnant, but it takes 8 or 9 minutes of apnea to have problem in these patients who are well pre-oxygenated to get the PO2 around 500. So that is the major problem with apneic patients because they desaturate at 3 to 4 times the speed than non-pregnant similar female adults. This is what is the pulmonary function test. You can see the FRC coming down like this. You can see the total lung capacity is not much. So it comes more and more of the ninth month. Now you can see, now non-pregnant patient, the, the big low is not accommodating here. Even the small artin is accommodating here at 20% reduction in FRC. There is no change in the strength of the respiratory muscles. The central dive increases. The tidal volume increases. The minute ventilation increases. But the respiratory rate might not change. The respiratory may be 15. The tidal volume increases, so minute ventilation increases. It may slightly go up. So in ABG, increased minute ventilation, increased PO2, washout of carbon dioxide. So there is a mild alkalosis respiratory because washout of carbon dioxide. Maybe pH is normal because the kidneys excrete bicarb. So a respiratory alkalosis, slightly renal compensation, bicarb is excreted. Why should there be a respiratory alkalosis? Patient is breathing more. This uh, um, tidal volume is increased, minute ventilation is increased, so carbon dioxide is washed out. There is a respiratory alkalosis, which is being carbon dioxide, which is being compensated by excretion of bicarb. That is why the pH may be normal or a slight alkalosis. Hasten's inhalational induction or changes in anesthesia when breathing spontaneously. So this is what is the important thing other than your desaturation. Desaturation is one significant factor in the reduction of FRC. Another factor is spontaneously breathing patient decreased FRC fastens inhalational induction. The CNS nerve systems are subtle, elevated pain threshold. They tolerate pain, increased spinal dynorphin, upregulation of descending inhibition. They should withstand labor pain better. This is a normal physiological change to withstand the pain better. This elevated pain threshold, increased spinal dynorphins, descending inhibition of pain is upregulated. So these are all the things which makes this adult laboring patients tolerate pain better than non-pregnant patients. The local anesthetics, there is maybe a decreased dose. There may be even 30 to 40% reduction required because 
characteristic. There are a lot of these things. One thing is progesterone induced local sensitivity increase. So sensitivity to local anesthetics is increased. So we need a volume of decreased volume. There is one more thing in the epidural space. Volume is decreased. So epidural purposes, if we need to have less volumes. There is a reduction of MAC of halogenated papers, approximately 25 to 40%. That is all because of your progesterones. An increased appetite, picav, you know, taking sand and all, the sense of taste may be blunted. Gastrointestinal, slower rate of emptying. This is what is important. So, every time, that is why we say, any pregnant patient is full stomach, even if the patient is fasting for six to eight hours, because the rate of emptying of stomach may be increased from three to four hours to 10 hours in these patients. So sometimes all these pregnant patients are considered usually as full stomach because of this. Morning stiffness contributes 70%, onset may be there. Levels of, yes, levels of steroid, smooth muscles of the stomach, or the G sphincter may be relaxed. That is why they are more prone for aspiration. Now you see the stomach is slow in emptying. It contains more volume. Yes. Now the, the sphincter is slightly relaxed because of your smooth muscle relaxation effect of the prostagens, progestogens. So that is why they are more prone for aspiration. Serum cholinesterase level falls by 24% to 48%, but this is not very much clinically significant in patients, but sexa is okay in normal pregnant patients. Good dose because we need airway control, good relaxation in difficult airway rather than thinking about your cholinesterase levels. Get a good relaxation, get the, see the cards well, maximum relaxation, put the tube in fast because we know that difficult airways are common, and desaturation is more fast in these patients. Don't bother about these cholinesterase levels, even though we know that this is a problem. In case we land up in problem later, yes, the cholinesterase may be decreased. Increase the sensitivity to acronium and rocronium, and but atracorium pharmacodynamics are not altered. But still, they may have an hangover symptoms without anything. The G is printer down, volume entering down, volume and acidity no change. That is why I told they consider as full stomach. They have portal compression and perianal hemorrhoids. Kidney is enlarged and increased renal vasculature. Ureteral and renal pelvis dilatation by 8 weeks. Mechanical compression of the uterus. Smooth muscle relaxation. And there is an increased incidence of pyronephritis. And there may be some glycosuria in non diabetic patients. You can see effective renal plasma flow. See, because the plasma is increasing, the GFR is increasing, so the urea and creatinine may fall actually in patients with pregnancy. Normal persons, you may have 1 or 1.2 creatinine, may be normal. But here in pregnancy, usually it is less than one. Even one, beware, think there is something wrong or something wrong. So, creatinine increase and danger means yes, not more than one. Greater ADH perception, increased vasopressinase, increased sodium retention, maybe sodium excretion may be normal. These are all some of the other factors of renal physiology. Hematologically, blood volume increase, RBC cell volume increases. Everything increases, but cell volume increases little less than volume increase. So we have an anemia. Blood volume increases by 45%, while red cell volume increases only by 30%. So we have an anemia. This differential increase is called the physiological anemia of pregnancy may function to decrease blood viscosity and may improve intravenous perfusion because already we have a placenta low saline circulation. Yes, 
we need some more little less viscous blood to easily flow through the placenta. That is why this mild physiological anemia of pregnancy is helpful in transport of other nutrients, even though there is a this is very important. That is the use of physiological anemia of pregnancy. Iron supplements are usually needed. Dilution of plasma causes reduction of antibody tigers. That is why sometimes if you become pregnant, your rheumatoid arthritis will become normal. Because you have got some skeletal muscle spasm relieved, you have less of antibodies because your antibody tigers are less because of so much of rise in the blood volume. So it, it all your autoimmune diseases may become normal in pregnancy. So you have coagulation, platelets are immature, chronic low-grade consumptive coagulopathy, all coagulation factors are increased, thromboembolic complications are normal. BTCT is normal, but thromboembolic complications are common. ESR and CRP may be elevated. So they are pro-coagulant. This is what we should understand. Pregnancy is a pro-coagulant state. Here easily the blood is likely to get clotted. This is why we need that. We need that because to decrease your blood loss after delivery. This is a normal physiology. Pregnant mothers are pro-coagulant because they need to lose less blood after delivery. Now you see pregnancy is a diaptogenic state. Insulin resistance is there and higher average blood glucose levels. They are more prone for ketosis. A normal pregnant woman is due thyroid. And free thyroid may be the best test. A lot of these things is there in endocrine, thyroid disorders and dysfunctions. Because TSH of more than 3, they say, is little risky. Plasma cortical binding increased. Free cortisol rises. Testosterone is slightly right. All these things are some of the other endocrines. So normal important endocrine is pregnancy is a diapetogenic state. It worsens blood sugar curve control. What I do is normally if the pregnant receives around 40 units of insulin after the delivery if it is not going to be GDM they may come down by 20 units. 50% reduction will be there, usually. In skin, spider angiometa, elevated, fria gravitorum, hyperpigmentation, mask, melasma, increased crying cerebrum secretions, all these things are common. You can see red, red spots here, stria here, hyperpigmentation, melasma of pregnancy, increased crimes, increased sweating, and increased sebaceous gland actions. You can see a lot of eye changes also, thickness of the cornea. So that is why pregnant patients after seven months, they say they cannot wear their contact lens because cornea may become thicker. Intraocular pressure may decrease, but that is why many of the pregnant patients, they say contact lens problems. So as, after pregnancy, you can go into spectacles and after four to five weeks postpartum, we can go back to your contact lens. Skeleton, there is a lardosis. We need lardosis because there is a bump here and we need to balance that. Relaxing is a relaxation of pubic symphysis and sacroiliac joints. Yes, that is needed. You need to secrete relaxing to relax the muscles of the pelvis so that the delivery is smooth. Sometimes it may cause unsteadiness of gates and trauma from falls. That is a clinical implication of this. But actually, it is a normal physiology of relaxing production and pelvic muscle relaxation so that the baby comes out easily. Keeping maternal blood levels less low. Less drug reaches the fetus. 75% a large portion can be metabolized before. That is the importance. It goes through the liver and metabolizes. That is an advantage. So what happens in fetal distress? Fetal acidosis can cause problems. Fetal pH is normally maternal pH. That results in becoming more ionized when they reach. This is what is called trapping them on the fetal side. If there is a fetal acidosis, if you give local anesthetics, more local anesthetic gets trapped on the fetal side. 
This is what is called the lordosis. This can cause altered back, edema, difficult position, labor pain. That is very important. And epidural pressures are not very easy as a non-pregnant persons. These are all the problems in administering an epidural or spinal in patients with pregnancy. So that is why people prefer, some people prefer sitting to find out the midline because midline itself may not be visible in these patients. We cannot pre-medicate for other patients for hysterectomy or hernia or something. We just, we can give some pethidin, we can give some metazolam and then all these things is difficult in patients with pregnancy. They have already some pain. They are in stress pain. There is an edema. Already there is an increased lardosis. All these things make regionals slightly difficult in patients with pregnancy. Now you tremorize, they are prone for hypoxia, inhalation induction is faster, CVS clotting renal changes, difficult airway, MAC decreased, pain decreased, full stomach, epidural is difficult, wedge, and dose of LA is decreased. I will go back in the reverse way. Now you concentrate for two minutes. The baby needs to grow. Okay, so more blood is needed. So the blood volume increases. Okay, if the blood volume increases, there needs to be some space. So there is vasodilatation and the blood has to go to the placenta. So placenta is a lower resistance circulation. Blood volume is raised. But we need a low viscous blood to flow easily. That is why the volume increases this much. The RBC increases this much. A physiological anemia easily smoothens the intravillous blood flow. The cardiac output increases. Because we need blood to flow into the placenta. The heart rate increases. The each stroke volume increases, cardiac output increases. Okay. In labor, it goes up to 7 liters or 8 liters. The cardiac output increases, but already we know vasodilatation has occurred because the blood volume has to be there. So, vasodilatation causes SVR to decrease. Your resistance is decreased. Now, cardiac output is increased, SVR is decreased. So, this into this is equal to blood pressure. So, blood pressure remains constant. It does not change much. But sometimes, because of the vasodilatation, the diastolic pressure may come down slightly. Okay. The respiratory system, we know, the FRC decreases. That is one point. We know that they are prone for desaturation. They have to breathe fast to put oxygen, more oxygen. That is why the PO2 may sometimes increase more than 100, 102, 104. There is a washout of carbon dioxide. There is a respiratory alkalosis. Why all these things happen? Because we need more oxygen into the blood of the mother so that more oxygen goes to the fetus. So there is an increased minute ventilation. This causes carbon dioxide washout under respiratory alkalosis. Okay. Now, inhalational inductions in the cardiovascular. Yes, we also need clotting to happen because we don't need postpartum hemorrhage. So we need clotting to happen, so they are pro-coagulants. There are a lot of renal changes. There may be renal glycosuria. In GA, MAC is decreased. That is very important. Difficult airway. So we may need ramp position in many of the studies. And difficult airway is important. Even though the scolene, succinyl cholinesterase is decreased, scolene amount or the dose need not be decreased. We want good visualization and easy intubation. The pain threshold is increased. Pain feeling is less because it is also a physiology of labor pain. So we keep a wedge because we need to decrease your supine hypotension syndrome. I am again telling every pregnant, every pregnant will be compressed by the, will be compressing her IVC and this is what is called Concealed cable compression. What is that called? Concealed cable. Cable means inferior vena cava. Cava is compressed. So, but it is not revealed. Because the other things to bypass is there. Blood goes through the epidural veins, goes through the azygos vein, 
enters the SVC, bypasses the IVC completely. That is what is called concealed cable compression. The patient did not have or do not have any symptoms. But if you give spinal, there are two things which happens. Number one is the uterus thoracic falls and compression of the IVC is very severe. The sympathetic is not there. There is no pressure. The muscle tone is gone. All this makes difficult for it to push through epidural veins into the acyclic vein. So the fall is very significant. This is what is called revealed cable compression. So these things have to be important. So wedge, that is why the wedge is needed. The dose of local anesthesia is decreased because of increased sensitivity to local anesthesia. So when and what changes? Physical changes will take place 24 to 28 weeks. For example, your uterus is pressing the diaphragm. That's a physical change. It happens after 24 to 28 weeks. A physiological change, the cardiac output starts to increase by six weeks. That is what is the difference. You should know what is the physical change and what is the physiological change. And thank you very much for the patient listening.